Hello, I'm Alex and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a place where I talk about what I've been making each month, what I've been knitting and sewing and I'm going to put my cup of tea down and start by sharing what I'm wearing. It's quite warm since I've been getting ready for the podcast and I probably don't need this shawl on anymore. But um, So I'll take this off. It's the Pebble Beach Shawl by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade and I knit this using the Woolly Mammoth Fibres, I think it's her BFL Masham 4 ply base, but I don't remember the colour. It's um, a short, I've actually knit this twice, but it's perfect if you just want something small to go around your neck if you're wearing something like this, like a v-neck, or you've got a sweater with a low back. I really like the bigger shawls, I know it's much more trendy to knit these huge great big shawls but I just find them a bit overwhelming if I'm actually busy doing something wearing a shawl like that so I tend to use those more if I'm going out or if I'm actually just snuggled on the sofa almost like blanket style I'll wear one of my bigger shawls but just for around the house I actually find I gravitate to these little single skein shawls which were really popular when I started knitting and this is a really simple eyelet lace shawl with, I think you would call that a pico bind off. I love the crescent shape, it sits really nicely around the neck and yeah it's just perfect if you want something to keep you a little bit cosy around the neck. So I'll pop that to one side because I don't feel that I need that on and I'll show you my sweater because I finished my Essena sweater. If you have been following me on Instagram you'll have seen the photos of this already but I'll stand up so you can get a better look. It's knit using Wool of the Andes in the Merlot Heather colourway. I'll stand a little bit further back. So it has this really nice um, sort of V detail in the front and that also carries under the arms. So you've got that in the side seam, on the raglan seam and you have a sort of spine and it goes into the same triangle shape at the back. So it's a really comfy, cosy sweater. I've knit mine on the looser side, so I think she says you can go up to six inches of positive ease. So I think this actually turned out to be about seven inches of positive ease, but it's a really great size and shape for me. I find it cosy and comfortable. I made some modifications to the sleeves because last time when I was speaking to you, I think I'd realized that the sleeves in the pattern were written to be about 18 inches long, which was way too long for me. I'm very petite and when I measured some of my other sweaters, I was, I think about 12 or 13 inch sleeves were about what I had. So I had a very, very wide cuff just stopping the sleeve at the point where it hit my wrist. So I realised that wasn't quite right and I actually ripped back the whole of the sleeve and I decided to decrease to the sleeve count that Jacqueline gave for the sort of wrist point where you'd cast off and I just did the decreases much faster and I think I did them over about like 70, 75 rows, something like that at my gauge that got me a 12 inch sleeve and I put a little, I'm not sure if it will show up, if I put it in my face it might, <laughs> but I've done a one by one rib just for three rows to finish the cuffs because in the pattern you just bind off and I preferred the look of just having a little bit of ribbing so I just put three rounds of twisted rib and I think it looks really neat so I hope you like it too. I highly recommend the pattern. Jacqueline C. Slack is brilliant at writing patterns and I love the format she has. She does a printable version and you plug in all of the numbers that she gives in the full pattern so you put in the specific row counts or um, stitch counts for your exact size that you pull out of the pattern and you plug it into all the little spaces that she's left in the printable version so you can print it out keep it in your project bag and you're just following the pattern that's just written for your exact size and I love that and the pattern was very easy to follow I've knit in the knit the rift tee which is also by Jacqueline C slack and that was the same, really clear instructions and very detailed. I like, her patterns are quite long, but I like that, that they're really thorough and detailed. You don't need to try and condense them to go in a magazine or in a book. You can, when it's a PDF pattern, just put as much detail and be as clear as you need to be. So I love that. So really happy with that. 
happy with the yarn I have worn this loads it's starting to peel a little bit like under the sleeves I don't know if it would show on camera but nothing that a little debobble won't solve but it's really cozy but not overly so I felt like it might have been a bit too warm but actually no it's been really comfortable and I've worn it loads I've been wearing it non-stop actually since I cast it off so I know that I had a few like reservations like the yarn felt a bit heavy I think maybe when I had it on the needles it was feeling heavy but on it just feels lovely it feels great and it's a really good price point so I'm happy with that but I was intrigued to try the Will of the Andes Sport which is obviously a lighter weight um, yarn so I've got another project here that I'll show you and it's in one of my project bags this is a medium sized bag which is just right for this project so I think I've got my cardigan and about five or six skeins in here so I've got this is the mink heather colorway and as I said this is wool of the Andes but in the sport way so you can see it's a kind of it's actually a cooler shade than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a slightly warmer shade. Um, but it's a lovely yarn. I'll show you the swatch because it's a bit hard to show you the cardigan while it's bunched up on the needles. But I'm actually knitting it at a slightly different gauge to what I what is written in the pattern. So I've got about 19 stitches per 4 inches on 4.5 millimetre needles. And I just love this fabric. I was playing around trying to get closer gauge to the pattern. I'm not sure if I've actually said the pattern name. It's the Field Cardigan by Hayley Smedley of Ozetta. And yeah, the pattern, she has actually a couple of field cardigans, a similar style but different weights. And I wasn't getting gauge for either of those. And I just decided that I'm going to go with the fabric that I like, which is the beauty of knitting. You can tweak things to fit what you want to do. So I'm knitting a slightly different size. I'm going to knit the extra small. And with my calculations, I think I will get closer to the medium finished size, which would be a great fit for me. So I'm doing that. I'll try and show you a little bit. Um, let me try and show you this size. Um, so it has a slightly sort of v-neck finish and as you can see it's got a knitted on um what would you call this the button band and <laughs> knitted on button band and collar you can see i've done the first buttonhole there so i don't need to go around and pick up when i've finished knitting the body the only little bit finishing there will be is this here it's a really interesting construction actually i haven't knit a cardigan like this before it was interesting doing the um sleeves uh, yeah, or the shoulder I should say. But it's going to be a really nice cosy cardigan, even in the lighter sport weight. I can just feel this yarn just feels so cosy. It's, I think it's, um, I've said this before, I think it's a Peruvian wool. I think it's just 100% wool, so it has that really nice crisp, sort of woolly feel. It's not a super wash yarn, so it has that slight toothiness, but I find it next to skin soft. I think it's a really great yarn if you like those sort of woolly wools. So I'm really pleased with how it's coming out. And I'm sorry you can't see it very clearly on the needles. I'm going to put the links to the pattern so you can check it out and see what it looks like. It looks like a very cool kind of cardigan. It's definitely a cardigan that I was pinning lots on Pinterest where it's just quite a boxy, straight fit. It's fairly cropped, it's not super long, and yeah, it just has kind of a, a gradual V with this nice kind of chunky button band, just has three buttons, I think I'm going to do wood buttons, and yeah, it's just a very nice kind of cardigan that you can throw on with this t-shirt and jeans, so I'm pleased with how that's coming out. So I think the next thing I'll show you is my mitts. Let's talk about the mitts. So last time I spoke to you, I was knitting the Rebel mitts and I had to go back and do a little bit of a re-knit on the thumb. And I'd gone to try these on my nephew and just found that the thumb hole was a little bit hard to try and get his fingers and thumbs um, around so I decided to just go up one stitch I actually tried doing more stitch and that was way too big all it needed was one extra stitch so I did um, picked up six stitches either side of the thumb and it's a great fit now I can actually fit my little finger in whereas before it was just too tight I couldn't kind of manage to maneuver the thumb very easily onto his thumb if you've tried putting gloves or mittens on 
a child that's under two years old, you'll know it's quite difficult to manoeuvre their fingers anyway. So to try and get a thumb in quite a tight thumb hole was just too tricky. I wanted to make it super easy so that they'd be used every day because if they're not easy to put on, I know they won't get used. So I think they came out really cute. They're knit in Cascade Heritage in the white and the, I think they call it mustard. It doesn't look very mustard. To me, it's a very bright yellow and I think it's really fun for children. His um, puddle suit is green and it's this sort of tone of green as well so it will match really nicely. And I think they're really cute. It's a pattern by Hannah Lisa Hafferkamp in the Making Stories Kids collection which was really kindly gifted to me. Um, I think it was sometime last year. They released the collection as a digital version but I've seen that it's actually in print now so if you have kids in your life it's a really nice collection love these mitts they've got some great hats there's like a blanket I think there's oh there's a lovely sort of cowl sweaters it's a really great all-round collection for kids and I think they have a really nice modern style I love the yarns and the colours they use it's like very inspirational book when you're flicking through so if that's something you're interested in I'll pop a link to that below as well but these are going to go in his advent calendar so that's why I've still got them even though I showed these to you quite a while ago and I said that I might have left them with him but once I tried them on and I knew I had to re-knit them I came back and thought I'm going to put these in his advent calendar because it would be just the right size so I'm going to pop that in the pocket and as I'm talking about advent calendar I'll show you I'm going to put some of these little mice this is um, by Anne Wood and it's called The Very Nice Mouse, Very Nice Mice I think it is, free pattern, really simple, lovely to knit, lovely to sew. I've used some scraps of wool felt that I had and I'm going to make a few of these and I'm going to embroider a little M for Maya, which is my nephew's name, I'm going to put a little M for Maya and I'm going to put a thread through the top so that he can hang them on the Christmas tree because they're a perfect size of hanging on a Christmas tree. So that's my plan for those, going to whip up a few of those um, and put them in his calendar as well. While I talked about stitching, I'll show you I finished my sweep in the garden. This was a Barbara Anna design and I really love how this turned out. I had it displayed um, sort of through the autumn I've had it with a little display of pumpkins and pine cones and yeah she looked so cute and autumnal it was a really nice little display and yeah I feel a bit sad and don't really want to take her down yet so she's still in with some of the wintry bits but I am going to switch her out for my little Christmas tree cross stitch that you probably saw last year I'm sure I would have showed that on here I've got a little Christmas tree that I stitched which is I think that was Alicia Paulson design, I'll have to have a look, she used to go out by the name Posy Gets Cozy I think was her name, but that was a pattern I've had in my stash for a long time, so yeah those are the little stitchy bits I've got. Next I'm going to show you exciting is new socks and these are really exciting socks because I am actually doing some Christmas gift kits this year, so I've got some gift boxes and one of the gift sets you're going to get is, I've got this lovely it's more of a square shape so this is a small project sack which is not a size that I usually have in all of my collections but it's perfect for this so as you can see I've got my whole sock project in there I'll just give you as an example and you can see you've got a bit more room in there so you could fit up to three skeins of fingering weight yarn but I've just got my sock project in there and Yes, I'm knitting the first snow socks. So as part of the gift box, you'll get your project bag, which has my little logo on the back. You will get the first snow sock pattern, which is by Olivia of This Handmade Life. And this is a beautiful pattern. I'll talk to you more about that just in a second. I'll just go through the other bits. You will get a DPN cozy. I put my blue moon pattern and it's stunning on all of the designs. I love it. It's so, I'm so excited to be doing this on more things than just my project bag because it really does look so lovely on like the lavender sachets and the needle books. But yeah, it looks really lovely on the DPN cozy. So you'll get the pattern. And I've got these lovely cards that will go in your package so you can have something physical and I will be putting in one of these lovely sock wash bars. This is a Jersey Milk handmade 
wash for your woolens and it's made on a farm in Cumbria so I'm really excited to be including those in the gift set as well and you will get the yarn first time I'll be having yarn in my shop the fiber coat amble and you'll have a skein of this in the white heather colorway so I'm really excited and this is just one of three options so let me tell you about the socks because I finished one of the socks already and I hope it shows up on camera these are just so squishy the yarn has a slight halo and it's a really interesting yarn from the fiber company they have used a recycled nylon and they've used an eco-friendly treatment to make the, the socks washable but they don't use anything that's harmful so it doesn't use the normal chlorine um, superwash technique they use something that's more gentle on the planet and you can read all about that I'll put some um, I'll put a link to the yarn but um, actually they probably describe it on here yeah they call it an eco-friendly anti-shrinkage easy wash treatment and it said they waited until a recycled nylon and an alternative to the standard chlorine process washable wools became available. The end result is a soft yet durable yarn for merino wool and alpaca fibres processed with an eco-friendly anti-shrinkage easy wash treatment. Yeah, so it has some alpaca in there as well. So it is a very soft, squishy yarn and it's beautiful. As I say, it has a little bit of a halo, but it just makes the squishiest socks. I knit mine on a two millimeter needle, which is what I would use for any kind of socks, because it is a plumper yarn. It, you can probably see, like it's really squishy and plump, but it still shows the lace off really beautifully. And I love Olivia's pattern. It's a really interesting sock heel that has no doesn't have a heel flat and it doesn't have short rows. It's a really interesting construction. I wasn't sure how it would fit when I saw it, um, but it fits really nicely. It's got a cute twisted rib cuff. She knits these small in the pattern, so they're like an ankle length sock, but there's definitely enough wool if you wanted to keep knitting the leg. In the pattern, you only need 50 grams to knit these socks this size but I can't tell you how much I love these socks I'm so happy to be offering it as a gift box in my shop so I hope that you'll want to knit them as well I think this would be the perfect Christmas Eve cast on I'm sure if you watch other podcasts you'll have heard people talk about the Christmas Eve cast on that I think Danny of Little Bobbins started several years ago where on the 24th of December knitters all over the world cozy up and cast on a new pair of socks in the evening so I just thought this would be perfect They're called the first snow socks so it's got that lovely wintry feel and I just love the idea of being able to share this wool with you and put together a lovely package with my bags and I'm going to make it so it's a lovely treat to open as well I'm going to wrap them all beautifully and yeah it's really nice to be able to offer the wool wash and the yarn all together and I think you're going to really enjoy knitting those socks. So I'll share with you the other options. So as well as this um, kit, you'll have the option to buy a sock sack and DPN Cozy without the without the yarn but you will still get the pattern so I'm going to include the pattern so you'll get the pattern sock sack and DPN cozy so if you've already got some lovely wool in your stash I'm sure everyone has got a stash full of fingering weight yarn that would be perfect to knit the first snow socks you can just treat yourself to one of these smaller kits and it will be a lovely treat to have for a new pair of socks so you can have one of those and then the more deluxe version is going to include one of my Blue Moon project bags. So you'll get the drawstring bag, you'll get the yarn, you'll get the wool wash bar, and you'll also get one of the lavender sachets. So that's the other exciting thing is I've put my um, I've put my design from the Blue Moon collection onto lavender sachets, and I've done it with this really nice dark blue fabric which I haven't used before in the shop. So I'm excited to have those. And yeah, I think you're gonna just love knitting these socks as much as I do. It's a really simple pattern. And the there's one, one row that has a cable on it, a cable twist. And in the pattern, she suggests using a cable needle as you would normally, but I found that it's a really simple way to do this. I'll give you a little tip is when I do 
um, basically all I do is I skip, miss the first stitch on the needle, so I've got my stitches on my left hand needle, and when I get to the point when I need to do the cable, I don't knit the first stitch, I knit into the back of the second stitch, then knit into the front of the first stitch and take them both off the needle. And then when I'm doing the cross the other way, I knit into, I miss that first stitch, I knit into the second stitch but through, through the front, then I knit the first stitch and take them both off the needle and it gives that twist that you need for the cable and yeah it's just a really really easy way of doing the cable without needing to use the cable needle because you're knitting the second stitch it means that you've got that first stitch either at the front or the back and it mimics the same idea as using the cable needle so that's a little tip if you don't want to have to faff around with cable needle but yeah super excited about that the other things I have in the shop so all of these bits will be available separately if you don't want to buy the whole gift box although I don't know why why you wouldn't want the whole gift box because who doesn't want to knit these beautiful socks but if you don't all these bits will be available separately I'm also going to have the notions pouches so these are perfect for notions I've got the little needle books as well so you can put your pins and needles if you're into sewing this is great size just for putting all your snips and tape measures and yeah all those lovely bits so I have those in as well but yeah I'm really excited I've been wearing my socks so if you remember a few episodes I knit another pair of socks with the fiber coat amble in like a brown shade and I think that was also, I think that was my Cozy Autumn socks. I'm sure that was another hair, this handmade life pattern. And they've been wearing so well. Last weekend I went on a long walk with my wellies on and I thought this would be a great test because I wanted to give them a proper test and see how they held up because I'd just been wearing them around the house really. And I was so surprised there was hardly anywhere. There was not really felting. It didn't feel like it was yeah it just they felt great <laughs> they didn't seem like they'd worn hardly at all and yeah it would be a real test if after the end of the winter season with lots of walks with wellies how they're holding up but yeah for the first wear I definitely have other socks where it's been a real disappointment to realize that my socks are worn through it, just like the first time that I'll wear them with a pair of boots or a pair of wellies but yeah thankfully that didn't happen and I'm so happy it didn't because now I can tell you with confidence that this is a brilliant sock yarn and you're going to be you're going to love using it I just think you're going to love it so yeah so please go over to the shop hopefully there'll still be some some gift boxes in there when this video goes live I've timed it so that there should be um, the gift boxes available as well so I really hope that some of you can get them because I was so disappointing that lots of people missed out on the advent calendars I think next year I'm gonna have to do like a Christmas in July or something and set aside a few weeks to make a lot of the advent calendars especially for people that know that they're gonna want them for next year and get those done earlier while it's quieter in the summer because I just wasn't expecting the demand for the calendars to be so strong because you don't know it's a totally new product I wasn't sure what to expect and I did as many as I could I really really tried to get as many out as I could um, but yeah I'm really sorry if you missed out but I will bring them back next year they've been so popular I'm definitely going to bring them back so I appreciate you watching and spending some time with me today. I'm going to go away and have a quiet, quiet time. I was going to say with my coffee. It's not coffee. I've got a tea. I've got a lovely berry tea actually today. So it just feels like the perfect temperature for drinking now. So I think I'm going to go away and I'm going to carry on knitting on my second sock so I can show you that. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed spending some time with me today and I will see you next time. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And don't forget that if you want the show notes to your email, there'll be the link below for that. I'll put links for everything I've talked about in the show notes and the link will be below. So I think you've got everything that you need. So I'll leave you for today and I will see you next time. Take care, bye bye.